having looked at the capital budgeting process, let's look at relevant costs in investment appraisal. When we looked at the ca capital budgeting process, we learned that at a certain stage, management does a quantitative assessment of the project prior to its assessment or rejection. Management takes into consideration several variables for the assessment. These variables are considered before the project is accepted or rejected. But what are the variables that should be taken into consideration and the variables that should be uh, that should not be taken into consideration? For every project, there are costs and there are benefits. The costs are the expenditure to be incurred. And the benefits are the cash flows expected. But which expenditure should be taken into consideration and which expenditure should be, should be ignored? Which of the benefits should be taken into consideration and which of the benefits should be ignored in the evaluation process. And that is what we are doing under relevant costs in investment appraisal. So what at all is what at all is relevant costs? Now relevant costs are costs and benefits that represent future cash flows that arise as a direct consequence as a direct sorry as a direct consequence of the decision under consideration. So a relevant cost are costs and benefits that represent future cash flows which will arise as a direct consequence of the decision to be taken. Now what is the decision to be taken or the decision under consideration? The decision to build to build the decision to acquire let's say an asset uh, the decision to acquire another business another entity all these are all these are investments that companies can uh, can undertake but before they can they can undertake this kind of investment they need to consider first of all you need to consider first of all the benefits the benefits that they would derive from this investment and the costs associated with the investment they are making. But we need to also be careful that these costs are expected or are future, futuristic in nature, meaning that these costs will be incurred in the future. 
or these benefits will be expected in the future. Remember, when we, we were undertaking the capital expenditure process, we stated that capital expenditure are for a long-term period. And so companies undertake projects that are for a long-term period. Therefore, the expected benefits from these projects can span two years, three years, four years, and even 20 to 30 years. So these benefits span a long period, and there are associated costs with this kind of benefits that we are expecting in the future. But which of these costs, which of these costs, and which of these benefits should we take into consideration when we are doing the project evaluation? Okay, so first of all, we need to identify the elements of the relevant cost definition. In, identif in identifying the elements of the relevant cost definition, we will be able to identify the costs and benefits that we have to take into consideration. First, the elements, first the elements of relevant cost definition. The first one is that they are, they represent their future cash flows. Their future cash flows. So any expected costs and any expected benefits from any investment project must be futuristic in nature. Must be futuristic in nature. So any cost that will not arise in the future as a direct consequence of the decision to be taken is not relevant. Any cost that has already been incurred cannot be relevant. So any cost that is relating to the past is an irrelevant cost. Uh, uh, sorry, it's an irrelevant cost. And any cost that is related to the future, considering the, the decision to be taken, is relevant. So costs, such as past costs, past costs, or sunk costs, are irrelevant for, for investment appraisal purposes. So let's take an example. Let's take, for instance, a company has acquired a land. Let's use this example. Company has acquired a land for over three million dollars for the past twenty years. They've already paid for the costs of this land. However, a decision is to be taken to build a plant for the production of goods and services that has come out of research and development. Therefore, this cost of three million that was incurred over twenty years ago relating to this land is not relevant for decision because it is cost that has already been incurred and it relates to the past. Another element of the definition is that they represent cash flows. Relevant cost must represent cash flow cash flows. must represent cash flows. So cash flows are, are the dollar amounts that companies expect to receive or expend. So dollar amount expected to be expended or received. So cash flows are the real monies that companies anticipate receiving or spending. So cash flows can be outflows as well as inflows. 
outflows are expenditure, something we will be incurring cost over uh, a long period or uh, for a defined period. And inflows are monies that we are expecting into the business in the form of revenue. Okay, so all relevant costs must represent cash flow or must be uh, mu must have an element of cash flow that is they must represent monies that we are expecting to receive or monies that we are expecting to spend as a result of the decision to be taken so any costs that does not represent cash flows cannot be relevant in investment appraisal. A typical example of such cost is depreciation. Now what is depreciation? Depreciation are amounts or money set aside by organizations to replace an asset when its useful life expires. So for instance, a company buys, let's say, uh, a vehicle now it intends to use the vehicle for 20 years that is the useful economic life of the vehicle so let's take for example this is a vehicle that the company wants to uh, buy now its useful life is 20 years and it bought this vehicle for say uh, one million dollars now, within the 20 years, the company must set aside money that they can use to replace the car or the vehicle when its useful life of 20 years expires. Okay, so this, the money they are setting aside comes out of accounting principle or accounting uh, standard accounting principle and the principle is that set some money aside to replace the asset which is the vehicle it does not represent monies that we have received out of the business as a result of any decision that we have taken but it comes out of the treatment or accounting principle that we used in treating uh, or we we've used in setting aside some monies for the replacement of the for the vehicle. Therefore, depreciation does not represent actual cash flows and therefore it is irrelevant in investment appraisal. The last one is that the last one of the elements of uh, relevant cost definition is that they must represent relevant cost must represent Relevant cost must represent decision. They must. They are costs. The last one is that relevant costs are costs that arise as consequence of the decision to be taken. be taken so any costs any costs that will, will be incurred whatever decision is taken are not relevant for relevant cost analysis any costs that will be undertaken whatever decision is taken are not relevant for investment appraisal purposes so let's take for instance a company has a warehouse let's take for instance a company has a big warehouse a big warehouse where it stores all its uh, where it stores all its products. 
so this is the warehouse now the the security let's say security work security of the warehouse the company has committed itself to a contract with a security company for the protection of the warehouse and all the goods and this uh, this contract is for say 20 years Oh, okay 20 years is too much let's take it that for, it's for 10 years now since the company has committed itself to that particular contract any any assessment for investment purposes of which security expense will be should be taken into consideration that security expense that was incurred or the commitment the company has has made for the past 10 years to the security company will become an irrelevant cost because whether the decision is taken to undertake the project or not that particular uh, contract must be honored by the by the company and so uh, and so they are irrelevant for decision uh, for decision making so let's look at examples of examples of uh, costs that are irrelevant for decision making. One example of such costs is uh, sunk costs, as I've already stated, sunk costs, because sunk costs does not represent future cash flows. Another cost is committed costs. Committed costs. Committed costs come under uh, the third definition, the third element of the definition, because it does not represent costs that arise as a direct consequence of the decision to be taken. Now let's look at non-cash items. Non-cash items. Non-cash items can represent depreciation because they, they, they are, they are. Uh, the uh, cost that arise out of an accounting principle but not as a direct consequence of the decision so it's uh, based on accounting treatment that we have such kind of costs that arise with uh, with 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 an investment decision the last one is overhead now, when we look at cost and management accounting, you realize that overheads are apportioned to cost centers or cost units. But the investment appraisal, there are overheads that must be allocated to the project as a whole. Now, overheads are costs that cannot be that cannot be identified with a particular project on a particular uh, a particular unit. Therefore, any cost that cannot, that does not represent actual cash flows, cannot be identified with the project, are uh, irrelevant for decision making. Okay, having finished with relevant costs, let's to, uh, let's look at examples of cash flows. Let's look at cash flows. Let's look at cash flows cash flows for investment evaluation let's look at cash flows for investment purposes